I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to have to go, Carrie, it's too loud. I'm going to have to go outside. Oh, that's Brandon. All right. We can look down here. Oh, okay. All right. I, I need a motion to approve the amended agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the the amended agenda, which was the inclusion of the classified salary and classified hourly in the um, the deletion of the 2023-2024 amended budget. Correct? No, it's not deleted. Oh. It's on there. It's just moved to old business. Oh, it's old business? Okay, got it. Thank you. Sorry, saw that, didn't see that change. So it's been moved from new business up to final approval of the 2020. Okay, please speak in. Can you hear me now? No. <laughs> Sorry, these speakers really are terrible. Okay. So I make a motion to move the, uh, approve the amended agenda. And if somebody, people haven't watched it, it's the approval, moving the final approval of the 2023-2024 budget up to old business. And, um, and adding the classified salary and classified hourly salary and removing the certified. Was there any other change? No. Okay. Second. I second that. Okay, I have a first and second. Do, all those in favor of the, um, of the accepting the agenda, the amended agenda, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, the agenda is adopted. Next, um, I need the, uh, a motion to approve the uh, board meeting minutes from July 26, 2023. I make a motion to approve the board meeting minutes from July 26th of 2023. Okay, I have a first from uh, uh, Vice Chair Brown. I have a Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, I have a second from Trustee uh, Hall. All those in favor of accepting the minutes from July 26, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, the minutes were accepted. Next, I have comments from the audience. First up, Sandy Brower. Can you hear me? Okay. Sandy Brower for the record. Um, I'd like to know what the delay is in improving the minutes. It's been stated by the superintendent that he could not apply for his provisional certification because the minutes from the meeting where the, of the board declared emergency weren't approved. I know the dialogue has changed since that statement was made, but I would ask that you supply an explanation if you can. Uh, Idaho Code 74205 indicates that all minutes shall be available to the public within a reasonable time frame after the meeting. I think we can all agree that 40 plus days is not necessarily uh, reasonable. So I'd, I'd love if you guys could do that. Consent agenda, um, please prior to approving the consent agenda, would you make the board and the public aware of the new hires that do not hold an Idaho uh, certificate for teaching or that are um, requiring an alternative uh, pathway? <clears throat> um, also in the consent agenda, we have resignations and um, on the radio last week, you said that the, the girls of the central office uh, quit. So I want to know why you haven't approved their resignations, if that's truly what happened. Um, at the last town hall, it was mentioned that Dr. or I'm sorry, Mr. Durst uh, was doing a feasibility study regarding the priest of Virginia High. I'd like to know when that was on the agenda and when that was approved by the board. I may have missed it. Um, also, he wasn't able to guarantee parents that, the, that their students would be attending school in that building. So if we could get that clarified, that'd be great. I would respectfully request that this board does not make any decisions regarding that building or moving our younger students with older students until after the recall. I think that would be a, the ethical thing to do. 
Um, also, I have submitted several public records requests, and some are over 30 days, but one that I got today uh, requested the price for Hillsdale, what we paid so far, and the request said that we hadn't paid anything, but you on the radio said that we had, so if you could clear that up, that would be great as well. Thank you. Okay, next up is Matt Nelson. Hello, my name is Matt Nelson, and I'd like to uh, encourage you, Mr. Rutledge, Chairman Rutledge, and uh, Trustee Hall, when negotiating for a salary package to honor your campaign against the levy that the teachers were getting 63.59 each instead of taking that away and only giving them a slap in the face of 2000 raise a uh, performance stipend that they have absolutely no control over how that happens they have no control over attendance they have little control over graduating all they can, can control is what they can control they they can't control what a student does or what a student doesn't do all they can do is encourage and I thank you so much for negotiating in good faith instead of sticking to your teachers who don't deserve any raise. Thank you. Next up is Desi Benedict. Please bear with me because I really hate public speaking. Um, but it's been weighing re really heavy on my heart to address this. First of all, I do not disagree with a few things that are the board's concerns with schooling. I also don't disagree with Maureen and Doug starting a fundraiser for the forensic audit. That's a great idea. Our community is so divided and just maybe that could help us come together just a little bit more. I feel that I have been respectful at every single meeting and I'm respectfully asking you to not label me as woke or a leftist. I am a conservative Christian. The next thing that I would like to address is on the July 5th, Vice Chair Brown stated that the budget is confusing and hard to understand and holy moly, you are right. Can someone please clarify if the million that Kathy and Vice Chair Brown is the same as the 800 and something thousand that Mr. Durst said that he personally found. And then regardless if it is or if it isn't, I am a fact person and new to be being involved in all this school board stuff. Can someone please post the bank statements without the bank account numbers, of course. And um, just to give the community a little more clarification on this matter with all this money that's here. Next up is Maureen Patterson. Maureen Patterson for the record. Heavenly Father, we praise and honor you. Thank you so much for all the blessings you give us for this beautiful place we live in. Please let your will and truth shine. Open our minds and our hearts to your holy will. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Um, thank you for bolstering our math department. Um, the school environment is greatly influenced by the teachers. Yes, family also is equally important, but the teachers can affect the graduation rate. I have heard from more than one student who are no longer coming here that were disappointed and disheartened for the bullying and the racism that they saw in their classrooms. And they said teachers were not putting a stop to it. Also, no advanced classes for the high ability students to challenge them and to help them with their scholarships towards college. Thank you, Keith and Susan, for standing firm 
and looking at ways of helping our students excel. Thank you. Next up is Kathy Patton. Hi, I'm Kathy Payton. Um, I have a question. Sorry. I was wondering that if the audit begins but is stopped after the first phase, how can we as taxpayers get the results of that audit? And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. Next up, Donald Payton. My name is Donald Payton, for the record. I want to convey my support for the Chairman Rutledge and Trustee Brown. I think they're doing an excellent job overseeing the largest employer in West Bonner County and its multi-million dollar budget funded by us, the taxpayers. Despite all the roadblocks, hurdles, and insults they have had to endure trying to correct the inadequate educational situation this school district faces, they continue to fulfill their responsibility to the community and with no pay. I would like to quote something my father, who was a junior high school teacher for 43 years, taught me when I was quite a bit younger. He said, fixing it is easy. Finding out what's wrong is hard. You cannot fix the problems in this district if you do not know what and where the problems are. This takes time. And after all, you don't know what you don't know. For example, why are so many teachers leaving? Exit interviews have not been conducted and or recorded in the past. This is a normal business practice that Superintendent Durst told me that he's going to implement. Why do we have a 63% graduation rate? There has been no follow-up questions or poll in the past of those students who did not graduate to determine why. We have all heard about improper fiduciary problems. This is where a forensic audit is called for. Please let it run its course. And a quote misattributed, misattributed to Albert Einstein, I'm sure you've all heard, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. I ask the community at large to please let them do the job we elected them to do. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Next up, Kathy Nash. Kathy, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Kathy Nash for the record. I, first off, I wanted to thank Brandy for posting the invoices and, uh, for the bills on the agenda so that we could look them up. Um, I was noticing that there was uh, uh, Vista, City Service, Valcon, Verizon, all appear to have the um, second statements or second postings um, that where they should have been paid already. And um, I remember in several months back that Steffi had, had made it a pol had a policy change that we would um, make sure that those payments are sent out on time and I was just wondering why they weren't sent out by the 15th uh, as they should have been um, of the month, whatever. And sorry, I left my whole thing at home. <laughs> I'm trying to do this from memory. Um, also, I was wondering what um, what our membership dues are for this Idaho Rural Water Association. Uh, what purpose is a membership dues for that? Um, also, in the Walter Nielsen uh, invoice, I noticed there was no itemized listing or even an itemized invoice for that. It was just a statement, and uh, it'd be nice um, if in the future we could actually have see more of that. And I'd like to pair it, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, um, that it'd be nice to have the bank statements or the credit cards with the more easy access. That's something I've been at requesting for a couple of years now that the public was, would be able to see them. Um, again, thank you for your time. 
all your efforts, all that you're doing. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Jackie Mares. My name is Jackie Mares. Policy, no policy, and what are ethics code violations? Was there a policy in place to remove any individual from the district accounts? Who should have taken care of that? Without that action, they, them, had unfettered access and carte blanche to do as they saw fit with the accounts and records. The same person that was favored over policy 1600, item 14, support employment of the best qualified. Instead, the district spent over $30,000 to train them, which appeared to be a waste of money because nothing changed. When the board looked at policies and discussed the hiring of an attorney, they, them, were not in favor and questionable statements were quoted as true, misleading the board and the public. ISBA is not a legal resource, per their disclaimer. They, them, was almost the, always the sole voice communicating with ISBA on legal matters, cost, costing nearly $10,000 annually. Idaho Code 33506C, the board can employ an attorney or attorneys when deemed in the best interest of the district. <coughs> district trustees are to be honest and truthful, not lie or mislead. Are these ethics violations? Placing fear in the minds of the community and children of losing sports and closing schools and hour-long bus rides if the levy failed. Speaking against fellow board members for their vote not to run the levy a second time. Policy Code 1600, Item 5, 6, and 8. Failing to support vote board member majority vote, decision and hiring superintendent, and instead public publicly working against they, their fellow trustees and the superintendent. While they, them voted for teacher raises, they, them did not provide complete and fact-based information pertaining to raises already given to the teachers. 8% from the previous superintendent, and 10% from the state. I've already provided that. Currently, all new member, all teacher, all new teachers in Idaho are at the top 10 of the highest paid teachers in the nation. They them worked against the hiring of Mr. Durst for a less qualified candidate. Was this ethics violation 1600 item 4, 6, 8, 10, and 14? And they them provided false information on open meeting laws against Idaho code. On that advice, the meeting was held at the junior high. The attendees became hostile to one another and to Mr. Durst. There was physical and verbal assaults that took place before, during, and after the meeting, placing the entire community in harm's way. This was dangerous and ne negligent. The rules governing contract negotiations are clear. Idaho Title 59-514 outlines that said contracts are to be made public within 15 days of entering into them. Was Ethics Code 1600, Item 3, 8, 10, and 17 violated on or about 3 11, 23 in a closed school district office for over 10 hours? They then participated in activities undisclosed to the community or to the rest of the board. Did they prepare a budget, eliminate or create files? What authority or policy is written to support that? Exploitation. Nude photos of children being taken and shared it's pornography, and it is within the high and junior high schools. Many educators are aware of this. <coughs> Many educators are aware of this. Some who have knowledge have already resigned. Quiet. Some who have knowledge of this have already resigned. Some not resigned are asking for raises. Where is the new district policy made to combat child pornography? Was law enforcement, was law enforcement recently notified? This is an ongoing issue and separate from the teacher. Point of right? order, it's over the two minutes. She's Explain why. Prior, she's got prior authorization to go longer than two minutes. Thank you. You should have said that at the beginning of it. Thank you. Was there, were there new district policies made to combat, were there new district policies, I know you don't want to hear this about the pornography, obviously there's a reason. Was there new district hey, policies made to combat order. child pornography? Was law enforcement recently notified? This is an ongoing issue and separate from the teacher rape of one of our children 
that concluded last year. But in addition to the molestation of a little girl at Priest River Elementary School, September, October, and November of 2020, which was glossed over as kids are curious. There is an ongoing investigation as we speak right now with law enforcement, so you all know. And as far as, far as the racism, I raised biracial kids, and I'm telling you right now, the N-word is dropped every five seconds in that person's school. Thank you. Okay, next up, old business, uh, consideration and approval of the driver's ed 2023-2024 driver's ed contract. Hello, my name is Brad Johnson, driver's ed here in Priest River, Buck Love Driving School. Okay, um, the contract, did you want to go over it? Um, or is it pretty much? It's, it's pretty much the same thing as last year. Okay. We, had a, uh, we have a fee increase from 300 to 325 per student. First of all, I need a motion to um, discuss this contract. I'll make a motion to discuss the driver's ed contract. Okay, I need a second. I'll second that. Troy Reinbold, second. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, any Only questions? It looks pretty much like it was last year. I was just going to say, so, except for the fees. Okay. And it, and it went up 25 bucks per student. Yeah, we told you that they were just to cut out a couple of changes made on that. Yeah. Um, just on the title page, these, these need uh, different names on them. Different names, sure. Okay. All those in. I need a motion to accept the contract as written with the motion of, or with the change of the names on the front. Oh, yeah. With basically being the contact being Brandy? Yes. Okay. And that, I believe, was covered by the legislature. I think the legislature actually increased the amount that they were paying on driver's ed. Brandon, do you know that? Uh, it's, it's Brett. No, I'm asking, is Brandon on here? Oh, okay. um, is he still here um, with Brandon, us? Brandon, can you repeat the question for me? I couldn't hear it. Um, is it, is it driver's, was the driver's ed increased from the state level? Wasn't it increased by the state level? So I unfortunately don't have a lot of clarity around that issue. Um, I don't have any additional information to share with the board about the driver's ed contract. Okay. Can, can you give me a date here? I mean, that needs to be changed, right? Unless we're backdating it. Are we backdating this? Uh, or is that June? Yes, that would be, because it's usually June, but I'm doing it. Okay. okay. And the email address needs to change as well. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the 
2023-2024 academic year um, driver's ed packet. Okay, I have a motion from Trustee Hall. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a second from Vice Chair Brown. All those in favor of accepting the 2023-2024 driver's ed contract with the, with the modifications, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, the contract is adopted. Thank you. Thank you, board. Next up, I need a motion to consider and approve the 2023-2024 district fuel bids. I'll make a motion to consider the 2023-2024 district fuel bids. Okay, I have a, a motion from um, Vice Chair Brown. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Trustee Hall. In discussion? Did you? Randy Parity, for the record, do you need me to present these or you guys just have them there if you have questions? It probably would be helpful to the public for you to present them. Okay. Everything. Okay, so um, do you just want me to read off? All right, so propane bids. I have a uh, bid here from City Service Valcon as well as Amerigas. Do you want me to say the, their prices? Sure. Is that, yeah. Okay. Yep. And uh, city service came in the fluctuating price per gallon, a um, dollar seven, and Amerigas came in the fluctuating price per gallon, a dollar forty six. They do have an option on here. Um, for a fixed price at $1.43 as well, Amerigas does. And that is it for the propane bill, the bids. Okay. And then for uh, the heating oil, I have a bid here from City Service Valcon for 12 cents over cost per gallon. And then, uh, Co Energy came in on that with four cents over cost per gallon. Okay. And that is the two bids that I have for the heating oil. Okay. Did we have five originally that you went out to, or in the second set that we went out to? Um, But they were for various things. Some people were for propane, some were just for diesel. Um, but there was nine that I emailed out. Okay. And then for the uh, the transportation fuel, the diesel and the gas, um, the only bid that we have for that is the Co Energy, and that comes in the diesel is 358.9 per gallon and the gas was 3509 per gallon. Okay. Okay, so I need a motion to accept uh, propane bid from City Service Valcon and a bid from, we'll, we'll do it separately. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion to accept the City Service Valcon propane bid at a dollar seven. Second. Okay. I have a first from uh, Vice Chair Brown, second from uh, Trustee Hall. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Okay. Propane bid is accepted. Okay, I need a. I make a motion to accept the bid from Co Energy for the um, heating oil bid at four cents over the cost per gallon. Okay, I have a first from Vice Chair Brown. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I have a second from uh, Trustee Reinbold. 
All those in favor of the home or the heating oil bid, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, the heating bid is accepted. From Co Energy. From, from yeah, Co Energy. And I'll make an I'll make a motion to approve Co Energy's bid for diesel and gas for transportation. Okay, I'm, I have a motion to accept Co Energy's uh, bid for uh, diesel and gas from uh, Trustee Hall. I, I second. Okay, a second from Vice Chair Brown. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed. Okay, Co Energy is accepted for uh, fuel. Thank you, Brandy, for going back out and doing all that extra work. Next up, I need a motion to uh, for final approval of the 2023-2024 budget. I'll make a motion to. Um, it needs to be brought to the table, correct? And, I mean, I'm sorry, bring it to the table. Yeah. I, I need a motion to bring it to the table. Uh, the 2023-2024 budget. I make a motion to bring the 2023-2024 budget to the table for approval. Do and I it's um, it's not posted. It's not there. It's not a, a ready. It's not on the website, ready for view by the public. It was. It's the same one. It, it should have been. It should be reposed. It's the same one that was done before. Okay. But it. Um. Brandy, can you speak uh, to that? Yes. So it's. The record, uh, my Go ahead, speak. Go ahead and speak. Sorry, it's difficult to hear. Yeah, we, we can hear. Well, okay, okay. For the record, my name is Melissa Riley, and I hold the position of business manager. Um, I acknowledge the budget's current gap. Sorry, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, and I acknowledge the budget's current gap and want to assure you that we're actively working to address it as quickly as possible. Um, right now it's looking like this adoption is mandated by state code, but we are already in the process of revising it to better meet our needs and targeting to have the revision ready by the next board meeting in a few weeks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it Mr. Okay. Chairman? Yes. So Superintendent Durst, I just wanted to, to, to add on so we all recall, just as a background, um, the board approved a budget initially uh, a couple weeks ago, and we set this meeting uh, hearing to ensure that we had a uh, so that we had the budget approved. This is the this is the statutory process we have to go through for a form for a final budget. We recognize that um, the the budget is not a final product. Actually, but this is given what we have to do with the state. This is the process we have to go through. And as um, M Melissa was just saying, we have uh, it's our intention to have a a more uh, comprehensive budget available for the board to, to to vote on and for the public to review at our next regular meeting. Okay. But by getting this approved today, our final approval of this today will allow us to. Um, will allow us to be able to submit that budget to the state so we can make sure we're getting paid for um, for the next August 15th payment. Okay. And I don't know if we need to, I would second bring it to the table if I didn't. And then just clarification on the 2023-2024 budget. That 10 hours that I spent with the business manager, so-called building the budget, was actually creating the notebooks that each one of the board members got from the business manager. There was no discussion about the budget. It was putting those packets together, whether you looked at them or not, okay. about the breakup, break, make, okay. building of the budget. So I want to clarify that, but I will make a motion to approve the budget. Okay. I have a motion to approve the budget from second. Trustee Hall. I have a second from Trustee Reinbolt. All those in favor of the 2023-2024 budget, please say aye. 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 
Those opposed? Okay, the budget is uh, approved. Okay, next, I need a I need a motion to accept the consent agenda. I make a motion to accept the consent agenda. Okay, do I have a second? I, I would hold, I think there are questions. I would, I would make a motion to bring the consent agenda to the table for further discussion. Okay, I meant, okay, bring it to the table, I'm sorry. Because I think there are some, it, the uh, invoices are under the consent agenda. Okay, um, I need a motion to bring the consent agenda to the floor. I will make a motion to bring this consent agenda to the floor. Okay, I have a motion to bring the consent agenda to the floor. Do I have a second? I second. Okay, uh, Vice Chair Brown seconds. Questions? Brandy, I had sent you an email earlier in regards to a few of these. And on Walter Nelson, if I remember correctly, we just received, we received an invoice for 29.98.36, but there's no detail um, attached to this at all, which indicates what services this company provided for us. Were we able to get any of that information? Um, I still believe that anyone in this room would like to see a detailed accounting of what this dollar amount represents. Point of order. Point of order. Are there other questions you had on the invoices? I think there were some that were presented by Kathy Nash, I believe. Um, so the Idaho rule. Uh, were we able to find out when the parents had submitted a request for refund for lunch monies? Was, was there a date on those uh, forms that were filled out? It looks like Terry had filled these out. Let's see, one of them is June 12th, all three, June 12th, 2023. So with us approving this today, those three families will go ahead and get their um, funds back? Yes. Okay. Because apparently they've waited long overdue. Okay. Any other questions? Um, we also had a bill. Let's see here. It was city service. They were charging us a late charge. Um, has that been addressed? My understanding was we actually had some overpayments there. Um, yes, speaking with them today, sorry, I'm trying to find that bill. It seemed that we had multiple um, multiple times where there were there were many um, double payments made to city service Elcon um, I have an email here from March from city service Elcon stating that 
with so many overpayments that all of that extra money was applied to eight different invoices and it covered seven of them in full plus $350 of another one. And then she stated here that she also wrote off the two finance charges that would have been on whatever those statements are were. And then um, we currently have a $952 credit with City Service Valcon because then after the, the March um, extra funds were put towards other invoices, we overpaid again and ended up with an extra $952 there which they are going to cut us a check for that since that is all for the last fiscal year so that we start 23 24 with a zero balance oh, perfect thank you yeah. oh i had one extra question okay. what services do we actually get for paying $130 to be a member of our, or excuse me, IRWA. That I'm not sure of. I didn't have time to look into that today. it has to do because of um, the pre-click elementary school might be more of a rural so that might be have to do with that but we um, it's due um, just so you sorry I was trying to say the I somebody was asking um, Su um, Susan was asking about the I RW the Idaho Rural Water Association why we're getting a hundred and thirty dollar membership due and what I was saying is I believe that the priest Lake elementary school might be part of that Rural Water Association, but that was my best case. Thank you very much. I didn't have any other questions. Okay. Thank you, Brandon, for getting that. I'm good. Okay. Okay, I need a motion to accept the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to accept the consent agenda. We have a first from Trustee Hall. I'll second that. Okay, a second from uh, Vice Chair Brown. All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 The motion carries. Okay, next up, uh, I need a consideration and approval of classified salary schedule. Uh, do you want to bring it to the table first? Yeah, I, I, I okay. bring it to the table. I'll make a motion to bring the classified salary schedule to the table. Okay, I have a motion from Trustee Hall. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, debate. Um, I think it's... Um, it's in line with what we had discussed over the course of this last year, trying to bring the classified up to um, a more competitive rate with, um, in terms of hourly, you know, the hourly rates next to, for, um, because we are so low. But I, I would defer to Brandon to, if he would like to discuss it, because there's some change, a little bit of, he's set this up a little differently with, in terms of finance operations, technology, food service. So okay. it might be good to have him sort of explain that organization. Superintendent Durst, could you speak to that, please? Can you hear me? Oh, sorry, I, I had it cut out there for a second. Do you need me to 
I'll go into some detail about what this is about. The classified? On the classified side. Um, so we uh, kind of have some organizational um, efficiencies. We've removed a couple positions um, from our uh, salary, from our hourly schedule. We moved in, into the um, to the salary schedule. So you'll notice that we have, we've done that. We've also consolidated the transportation director and the um, facilities director position into one role, which will be a cost savings. If you take those positions all together, we get cost savings of about $50,000 a year to the district. Um, we've also hired at the, at, the, at the strong recommendation of Virginia Overland, um, we're hiring a, a mechanic um, as a separate role. Um, so that'll be, hopefully that'll help us with maintaining our, our fleet. And then, sorry, a lot of my motorcycle in, in downtown Boise. Um, and then, uh, and so that's kind of, we tried to put those into departments so we could have some more accountability with where our money was going. And, um, and I have no further questions since I'm pretty somewhat familiar with this one as we've been working on um, negotiations, et cetera. So one thing I'd like to note is I am, it's, I do like seeing that there's the finance operations, technology, and food services. Having that organizational chart has been helpful. So I would make a motion to approve this salary schedule as stated. Okay, I have a motion from Trustee Hall to accept the uh, salary schedule. I second that. I have a second from Vice Chair Brown. All those in favor of the, of the uh, classified salary schedule? Please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, that's approved. Next, I need a motion to bring to the table uh, the classified hourly schedule. I'll make a motion to bring forth the classified hourly schedule. Okay, I have a motion from Trustee Hall. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I have a second from Vice Chair Brown. Discussion? Um, again, I, it was what we had been working on for a long time, bringing that base level up to $15. Um, Pointing out there is operations, food service, other support. Again, appreciate the organizational breakdown of that. I think it's easier to track, and um, I would make a motion to approve. Okay, I have a motion from Trustee Hall to approve the hourly schedule. Yeah, I would like to say I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think this scale right here breaks it down so much better. So do you And second? finally, yeah. somebody's gonna get paid right. So I second it. Okay, I have a first and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. The motion carries. The, the uh, schedules are adopted. I need a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Meeting adjourned.